Hello everyone, I'm Kim and welcome to my treatment room. I'm not in my sewing room today because it has just been so hot I can't bear it up there. So I've decided to come down into my workspace to do this vlog. Uh, so excuse the blandness of this room but there's lots of light in here and it is definitely a lot cooler. So as usual I'm going to kick start my video off with what I'm wearing. So this is just basically a um, shop bought dress. It's nice and cool. It has this um, beautiful smock effect on the, the yoke and I wouldn't mind having a go at doing some smocking myself in the future. Um, I quite like the, the look of that. So what have I been up to this week? Well in my last video I did mention that I had a bag in my head that I wouldn't mind making and I think because of the temperature at the moment um, it's been so hot I couldn't bring myself to actually make a garment but decided I'd make a bag because I thought it would be easier. Oh no, bag making is really involved and quite intense but once I got into this project um, it's done in stages so you just finish one stage and you move on to the next stage and then it's like building blocks and then it all sort of comes together at the end. So I've enjoyed um, making this bag and the bag I've made is because my existing bag, which I will show you, is this one. So this is the bag that I normally um, have. It's a crossover bag and I put all my stuff in here, you know, purse, sunglasses, etc. And for any normal person that will be quite acceptable and very roomy but for some reason I do put a lot of stuff into my bag so I thought I wouldn't mind making a bag myself. So I found a pattern and the pattern is um, the Arcea crossbody bag. So this was um, a pattern and I quite like the, the front detail and I watched um, a YouTuber make this up and I will put her a link to her YouTube in the description because I can't pronounce her name. So I will put it in the description so I don't embarrass my, myself by pronouncing it wrong. Um, but I thought I'd have a go at making, she made it look really easy and she makes bags all the time and does tutorials. So if you do want to make bags, she's definitely a um, YouTuber that you need to go and look at. So I thought what I would do because I wanted just to test out this bag, I didn't really want to buy any um, Pacific fabric for it, though I had bought some samples which I showed you last week because I bought a black faux leather and an orange faux leather fabrics and I I just thought I will buy something like that if I find the bag that works for me. So I made the Arcea bag out of what I had already in my my fabric stash. So it's a bit colourful but I made this out of um, the Tula pink um, fabric and for the life of me I can't remember the name of it but it has this beautiful um, zip detail in the front uh, and this bag has a lot of pockets so there's one in the front there's a slip pocket in the back which has a magnetic clasp um, so you get a nice front and back pocket then the the top has um, a zipper closing and then inside you have this wealth of pockets inside so you have um, a slip pocket here you have a, a coin pocket at the top here um, with a zip then you have some card slots here so I put a few cards in there so you could see it a bit better and on the other side you have another zip pocket with two sort of divided pockets here in the middle of the bag so there are lots and lots of pockets and for me um, oh, it has this beautiful um, detailed strap on it where you have a different fabric on the back and you have um, an accent fabric on the top 
and I did buy some hardware from a company called Me Me Made Makes or Me Makes Make no Me Made Makes and the hardware that came through was beautiful. So um, this is her hardware here, beautiful quality. And the actual zipper pulls, these star ones, I bought from Purple Stitches. So they're really nice. So I put one um, on the zipper at the front here, one on the zipper at the top, and there was another little one I put in the sort of pocket in inside. So this fabric, Tulip Pink, but this fabric on the side is what I got out of my subscription box from Studio 77. So I thought I would use that up. So um, it's a really nice bag, but it is way too small, a lot smaller than I thought it would be. Um, even though the the pattern had all of the, you know, the measurements on the front, but obviously I ignored those um, because I just like the design of the bag. But it was it was great to make this up with all of um, what I had in my stash, and I have um, put all my bits and bobs in it and been out and given given it a bit of a spin around the town when I went for coffee, and um, it is really nice. But I did find there. The one thing I didn't like about it is um, I did not like the the zipper at the top because this thing here is great, but you you're supposed to pop it in into the bag there, and then when you do that, your zipper pull goes into the bag, and so each time you want to close, it, you have to keep pulling this out to close it up, and I felt that this end closing here was too far away from the edge so it's a learning curve because I know that if I made this again I would probably size it up so I would print it out a bigger size and size it up and just play a little bit with um, maybe the width the the depth um, on the bag at the bottom is quite roomy so it does have quite a good um, base area to put everything but I think I would generally make this up a bit wider and just a little bit higher. Um, and I think I would also make the straps uh, a bit wider as well, because they were three quarter um, width straps and I bought three quarter width um, accessories for it. And they're not easy to find because <laughs> usually people stop one inch. Um, so they weren't easy to find, but me may, makes made actually had those in stock so as a first attempt I'm really pleased with it but I don't think it is something I'm going to use on a daily basis so I will revisit bags in uh, in the future because I definitely need something a bit more roomy so as well as the bag um, I have been searching websites for hardware and I went off on a tangent a bit of a, a purchasing tangent and tried to find different companies that sold hardware so as I mentioned I used uh, a company called Me Makes Me so I'll get over her box so this is her box so it comes lovely and packaged really nice um, and just to get her name right, because I've probably been saying it wrong, it's Me Made Makes, and it's run by a lady called Deb. And I ordered a few bits and bobs from her. So I ordered the hardware that's already on the bag, and I also ordered different um, clasps in different colour effects. I've got some rose gold lobster clasps there or swivel clasps as they're called because this is something else when you do do a new project um in for instance bags um it's learning all the new terminology um so i bought a little um lock there because i thought that might come in handy at some point and i bought these um different colored sliders rose gold and gunmetal and I also bought from her some um, 
magnetic snaps um, and god they are so strong they're, they're really good so I was really pleased with my little selection of hardware from her and I will definitely use her again and she was somebody who supplied three quarter inch a hardware so that's why I was drawn to her site because there weren't many that did and they were all very reasonably priced as well so I have I've got my invoice here and what I've done is I've put her website address up here so when I need to go and look for hardware again I will be able to find her because this will go into my supplies folder so they they were from Deb Debbie at Me Made Makes and uh, really pleased with those. I did go to my usual supplier, I say usual, I've used her once, uh, Bobbing Girl, but she only supplied hardware from one inch. So it's good to sort of um, check other sites out. So I was quite pleased with her hardware uh, as well. In my pursuit of more hardware, I thought I'd try some other places. Now I do buy quite a bit of stuff from the trimming shop. I buy the, the sort of double capped rivets and I use rivets in the bag, um, sort of gun metal rivets here and at the end and there was one also between the pockets so they just add a little bit of um, detail but I, I bought some more rivets from trimming shops, I bought some rose gold ones this time. And I thought I would see what bag hardware they also had. So I bought some magnetic snaps from them and they're here, they're all jumbled up. But you can see they're, they're rose gold and these were slightly different than the ones from um, Me Made Makes because these were thinner. So these were quite thin um, and I quite liked um, the effect of them being thinner whereas um, Deb's hardware was quite chunky and a lot stronger so they both have a place in bag making so I was quite pleased with with those and I would definitely buy magnetic snaps from the trimming shop again but I bought I did buy some of these um, I think they're called lobster or swivel clasps from the trimming shop and these were horrible. They are just so thin and oh, they're, they're an embarrassment. I, I just I just thought they were horrible. I, I only bought um, a set, a pair uh, and, I, and they weren't expensive so I, I just thought oh, I'll keep them. I will find something to use these on, but I'll put those in my stash. But I definitely won't be buying these sort of things from the trimming shop. I will stick to um, the sort of things I normally buy from the trimming shop are um, fasteners that I use in my green machine. So they're excellent for stuff like that. that. I think they're moving into the bag making uh, hardware, but... Uh, yeah that's not a great start so I wasn't wasn't happy with those so I definitely won't be going to the trimming shop for those but we'll be going back for magnetic clasps so that's what I bought from the trimming shop and staying with the theme of of bags I thought I would just look in my zipper drawer to see what I needed to restock so I bought some uh, continuous zipper tape and I bought some number three zipper tape because I don't have a lot of number three zipper tape so I thought these sort of things this size zipper tape would work better for internal bags because they're not as chunky and um, and I also bought this beautiful eggplant number five zipper tape um, because I thought that would have actually gone quite well with that bag that I made and this goes well with a lot of Tula Pink's fabric so I just thought I'd have a little bit of that in my stash and along with the zipper tape I bought all the zipper tape I always buy zipper tape from Zipper Station because uh, they do a, a huge range of colours and they also do all of the 
coordinating zipper pull. So I bought lots of um, the zipper pulls as well to go with all of those zips that I bought. So, and each meter that you buy, you get two pulls. So, so I've got a little um, restash of those. So I like to have those in my, my stash. So happy with those. So with bags still in mind, I, I went to the Cotton Patch website and I bought some Decaville light. So I bought my Decaville light. Um, whenever I buy anything like this, I'll always put a post-it note on and pin it so that when I go and find this stuff, I know exactly what it is. Because um, I did have something in my stash and I couldn't figure out what it was, whether it was Decaville light or not. And therefore I hesitated to use it. So I bought some more. It wasn't the same stuff. But um, this is this has got a really nice um, firmness to it and it's quite thin. So it's easy when you're making bags and sewing them up on domestic machines. So um, I bought some of that for my stash. So I've got that in, in my bag making stash. And I also bought some of this and I like to have... Um, this interface in my stash, it's ShapeFlex 101 and a lot, lot of bag makers have this to use to uh, stiffen the cotton fabric that they use. So I always have a little bit of this because it doesn't just work in bags, I also use this in collar stands because it's just a you know, little bit stiffer and I like to have a, a little stock of that. And I was running out of my G710 interfacing. Now this is a beautiful woven fusible interfacing. And if I just open it out a bit, you can see it's very fine. And this is great for um, shirt making, blouse making. Um, it's great for cuffs. It doesn't make them too stiff. It's also very good for shirt bands um, because if you double this up it gives a real real stiffness and sometimes if my, if the fabric I'm using in the shirt is quite fine I wouldn't put it over the whole of the band I would just literally halve it and just put it down so I can keep that softness um, so it works with the, the shirt fabric and I will also use this in a shirt collar but I would generally use a stiffer interfacing like the ShapeFlex 101 in the collar stand because I want that thing to actually stand up and um, be able to support the collar. So that's my G710 from Colour Patch. Um, and the reason why I went to the Colour Patch site was because I wanted some fabric. Um, to redo my chair in my sewing room. So this is another thing where I've got this in my head and I want to redo my sewing chair. My sewing chair, obviously upstairs, and what I will do is I'll put an image of the chair and I just want to do it exactly the same. The, the chair is um, it's just a plain fabric with a pair of lips on and I just bought some red, bright red, fabric for the lips so this will get interfacing probably with shape flex 101 uh, to add stiffness and I will redo the cover of that chair because it is looking decidedly uh, tatty. Um, I also have a chair in my treatment room um, which is sitting behind the curtain and that is also looking really really untidy and I was rummaging through my whip box the other day and I came across a piece of quilting of a um, Volkswagen Beetle which was a free design by Tula Pink and I made it up and I was going to make it into a cushion but the quilting itself went wrong it went a bit off skew and it's been in my whip box and um, I keep hearing my husband's voice and my head said, no more cushions, no more cushions. So I thought, Do you know what, I might actually use it to recover that chair. 
So I will put an image of the, the cushion front in and I will see whether I can get it to work for the chair. So you might see those coming up in the next couple of weeks because my sewing plans for next week are the Be Mine balloon sleeve top from Pattern Emporium. So whilst I've been working on the bag, I have been reading through the instructions of the um, balloon top and just getting an, a feel for it really and going through my fabric stash to see whether I could make, make it up in fabric that I've already got. So I found two pieces of fabric and so initially I've started, because you know that when I have a new pattern, I will trace it off. So I started the week tracing off the pattern, um, spending time to make sure that I've got the right size and um, just doing a little bit, you know, a little bit of measuring, making sure it's right and working on finding fabric. So I found the first fabric and I've already cut that out and that is upstairs being worked on. So you will definitely see that next week. But I had noticed that um, embroidery on glaze was one of the suggested fabrics in, in the pattern uh, suggestion list. And I found this um, fabric that I had in my stash here. Um, and it's been, no joking, it's probably been in my stash for over 20 years um, and I haven't want to cut into it. <laughs> oh, I haven't want to cut into it because it's just so pretty but I, when I was looking at it I thought, do you know what, it would be ideal for that top and it, you know, it's one of those things that when we start um, building up our fabric collection when you find the right fabric and the right pattern and that go together it just feels so right and you feel happy to cut into it so I um, have also been working on this and cutting this out alongside alongside the other one so next week you will fingers crossed see both of them made up and this um, embroidery on glaze is a wonderful fabric to where in this heat at the moment because obviously it's cotton it's quite thin um, it is quite thin so I do wonder what it will look like um, you know because you can see I don't know if you can see me <laughs> but I think it will be right with just a bra if not I will just have to wear a camisole under it which defeats the object of staying cool but I think it should be all right so that's my sewing plans for next week so I think that is it for this week. And I do find that when I finish projects, I go into a bit of a tailspin because I haven't got a clue what I'm going to make. And then when I decide what to make, I I have this procrastination process where I'm reading the pattern and assessing the fit and trying to find a fabric that works. Um, and I'm sure that we all do it. And then suddenly I get to a point where I think, right, just get on with it. And and that's what I've done this week with the balloon top. So I know that next week I will have two of them to show you. So I apologise that there's very limited content in this video, but if you have enjoyed it and you aren't a su subscriber, I would love it if you could subscribe. And if you are one of my regular subscribers, as usual, thank you for your continued support. And I will see you all very soon. Enjoy. Enjoy the weather. It's beautiful out there. So take care. Bye.